Hi, my name is Mark Furlong and I'm going to show you some tricks and um, tricks and tips in Photoshop. To make your life easier if you want to build things like websites or app assets in uh, Adobe Photoshop CC. Um, I'd watched a tutorial the other day, it was about an hour and a half long. So I hope to make a short video to show you uh, eight or nine tricks that uh, I thought were very interesting. Um, firstly, in Adobe CC, uh, there is a new grid system. So instead of pulling in your grids from the sides, like you normally would, you can now go view, a new grid layout, and you can specify, I think it's normally set to about 8, you can specify a 12 grid column, like the bootstrap grid system. Uh, your gutter is 30 pixels. And then you can set around the edges, your margin 30, 30 the bottom. You don't need 30 at the bottom, because your page will change and 30 on the right. So here you can see a grid system. So that'll help you for making layouts. So I have a bit of text here. Move that. So move that up here. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put in another paragraph and a title. So let's say title. Let's make that 20 pixels. And then we make it you know, green and blue. I won't I'll try that again. Green and blue. Green and blue. Okay. Now we want to get paragraph text because we want to make a like a fake website or something. So instead of having to type in this type, uh, a lot of blank type. What you can do is just delete that, change your color to gray. Um, instead of having to go look for type on the internet or filling out a passage of type, you can actually just go up to the type tool and paste Laura Ipsum directly into your text box. And let's just bring that down in size to about 14 points. Okay, that looks pretty good. And um, just break that up a bit. If you hold down the shift key and use the arrows, it moves it around in increments of about of, of 10 pixels. So you can have exactly 20 pixel gap between there. And okay, I'm just gonna hide the grid. The command and the semicolon on the Mac. And I think it's CTRL and semicolon on the PC. Okay, so we can go back to our title here and go to characters. Let's change that to all caps. Yeah, so that's guides and text. Colors. The color swatch, Adobe brought out a cooler app a while back, and it was very handy for getting colors or color schemes, things like that. But they have taken it out of the main part in Photoshop. So they actually renamed it and hidden it. So if you go to Window, Extensions, Adobe Color Team, so it's changed from cooler to color. So you can then pick your colors and it'll give you tones for that there. You can also explore teams. So if you wanted something like, let's say a bank, you'll get most likely shades of blue, colors like that. And you just take a minute to, to load. So yeah, that's kind of bank colors or so you can literally type in sports or whatever you like and it'll give you color swatches related to that topic. Or you can build your own teams or have a saved team somewhere else. 
that it's quite handy for making color swatches. Um, so that's that's where that's gone. And um, adding images into this instead of having to crop images to um, different sizes. Let's say I want to move these over and put in an image. So let's say I want an image the same size as this. So I'm just going to draw a box here. Get that size there. Okay. So I found an image. Actually, I have an image here that I got from Adobe Stock Photo. And it's just a sample image. So I'm going to copy that. Draw C over here. Draw V. Where is our image? It's too big. Well, let's line it up to roughly where I want it. Now, a great tip, a quick tip for this is if you go over here, I drew the shape, direct the square, and uh, put the image over it. If you hold down the Alt key and hover just below the image layer, you get this little arrow and a square, which creates a clipping mask of the rectangle you can click on the image still move it around so i haven't deleted around the image you can just crop down or masked out the rest of the image and then again here so create another box here maybe and then paste in control v So, move that down into place, hold down Alt, and mask. The other way of doing that would be right click and create mask. You have to release clipping mask first. Yeah, create clipping mask. That's the other way of doing it, but Alt. Holding down Alt is the shorter way of doing that. So you can also go in and Control T to scale your image. Hold Shift. That scales. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to hide the rules there for a second. So that's. Um, layer masks, color, and um, lower Ipsum text. So next on my list, we have quick exports. So let's say I want to export these images quickly to a location. And um, I can file. I'm just going to save the document first, file and save as, and desktop, new folder, and sample, mark for long, two, two, one, yeah, grand, save that. Now, so I have the document saved, I want to save this image, say, as a cropped image, you can actually right click, Export as, and it brings up. It's like the save for web window, so you can then save it as JPEG, GIF, SVG, PNG, anything you like. I'm just going to cancel that, so you can save it there. Uh, another quick way is when you save your document. So let's say I just we saved it there now, and let's rename this image. So this is the small. Image. This is the large image. This is my paragraph of text. I'm just going to move that down. That's my title. I'm just going to call that. If you do a bit of web work, you know H2 is a title. And I want my my name as like a logo. So I want to save that. I want it 
to export as an image. So I'm actually just going to call it .png. You'll see why in a few minutes. I'm also going to take out the capital F and capital M. And rename .jpg. Again, .jpg. Now if I go up to File, Save, and then go File, Generate Image Assets. This will actually save out the individual things for you. So I saved it, nothing looks to have happened. But if I go File, Open, Mark for along two twons. So this is my file that I saved. And then it's made a subfolder with my assets. And in here you have your big image, my logo as a PNG, and a small image. So it's actually exported out the JPEGs for me at the size that I wanted them. So I no longer have to crop them in individual files and resize them so you can do a lot of different things there with that which is brilliant and um, now for here i have my logo my h1 or h2 so i could have this is a h1 if i wanted this is a h2 and this is a paragraph so my title and my paragraph you can now actually go and select the layer and copy the css and it will actually give you the CSS for your title, your paragraph, or your uh, H1, H2, or your paragraph. But you can actually go to Artboard, right click on Artboard, and hit Copy CSS, and that will give you the CSS for all your layers there. So Copy CSS. Again, nothing happens. I'm just going to go down here and open up. You can use a notepad if you'd like. I'm going to paste in my CSS here. Now you can see that it has artboard. I don't need artboard. And small image CSS. So it will give you the width and height. You don't need the, the Z access and that type of thing. But if you want your logo size, your H2 size, and your paragraph size. Okay, and um, so I copied the CSS and it didn't quite work because this here is actually outside the artboard, the paragraph. So if I just drag the paragraph into the artboard, we have my P tag, bring that down to the bottom. Go back up to the top, copy CSS, go into Sublime Text, paste CSS. Now you can see my artboard, I don't want that. So here I have my H2, my paragraph, and my H1 or my logo size. So you can put that in as your H1. So you have your font size, font family, your line height, and you can take out your dimensions. So you can basically copy this into your CSS or uh, for your website, for your style sheet, which is brilliant. Or if you have a developer, you can give them these, uh, this CSS to help them along with the, the building things faster. Okay. So there are a few of the tips that I found that I found help. Okay, I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you speed up your workflow. Again, my name is Mark Furlong and thanks for watching.